Well hi everybody, I really hope everybody's staying safe out there, it's a really tough world at the moment, but it's time, I am now going to get my pond covers off and start spring. minutes and we're ready to start summer I've got quite a bit of clearing up and cleaning up to do but the covers are off what a wonderful sight well good morning everybody well morning it's actually dinner time <laughs> I've been a bit busy this morning but I'm only just getting out to my pond there's a bit of wind so I hope that's not going to interfere too much what I want to do today is get it all hoovered out and get all these copings cleaned down. A bit of a clean up really. I took the pond covers off yesterday, yesterday afternoon and I've just taken the back struts out to get them out of the way. So now it's down to a matter of getting it all clean out. Get some of this algae that's in the pond that's built up. It's not string of hair algae, it's just the uh, really small growing stuff that's in there. I want to get that all clean out give it a good hoovering out. So that's the next thing on the agenda, get all that done. There is some bits floating on the top there, but that's only because I've just been down the backside of the pond taking those struts out. So let's get on with a bit of spring cleaning on this pond. you can see in there but it's pretty cloudy and I can't see what I'm doing so I'm gonna give it an hour now and just let it uh, settle down a bit and then we shall have another bash get my plants back in the pond. Now over here they didn't fare very well through the winter. 
and the trouble is we can't get any more obviously at the moment they didn't do brilliantly as you can see I've drained the water down in here I've taken it all out and now I'm going to try to take them out I'm just waiting for it to drain out of the actual uh, boxes themselves so that obviously it'll make them a bit lighter I'm just waiting for them to drain down a bit but they didn't fare too well the grasses aren't too bad and I think there's one or two shoots coming off that one there down there there's one or two shoots showing on that so that's still growing so I'm just going to let them drain down get them out and see if I can do anything with them like I say we can't get any more so I've got to try to do my best with uh, what I've got okay I've got my brackets out as you can see I did number them before I put them away at the end of last season so I know which one goes where so I've got all them down I've got the first couple of plant boxes sorted out ready to go in and not much I'm afraid but it's the best we've got the way things are so I'll get them in and see how we go And there we go another job done now we're getting more like it now it's starting to look like a pond again well that's all the plants in and they're all up having a good old look at them they're all having a good old look around the plants they love them plants they like pulling them to bits really but yeah they love the plants that's why i put them in there really they do look nice as well when they're growing but they, they quite enjoy them a bit more of a natural habitat for them there's plenty of shoots coming off that lily again that's a good growing lily that one and there's plenty of shoots coming off that I don't see too much on the others yet there is one I don't know whether you'll be able to see it one leaf just starting to show on the left hand side of that pot but as for the other one I really don't know I think I'm going to uh, take that big basket off it that I've put there to protect it stop the koi eating it and let it take its chance because it's a pain in the bum with that um, algae all over it so I might just go down and chop that off that'll sort that out then but yeah they're all in there enjoying the pond and having a good time this is what makes the job all worthwhile sat here by the pond cup of tea well I usually have a glass of wine to be honest but a cup of tea 
and sitting and watching your fish absolutely excellent it's a absolutely cracking day here today the sun's blasting down there's a tiny breeze but nothing much at all oh what i did want to look at my pond was running 13 degrees 13 centigrade and after last night it had come down to 10 this morning it had knocked three degrees out of the pond it was down to 10 centigrade so we'll just nip and have a quick look and see what we've got on that let's just have a quick look here and see what we got oh we're back up to 13 degrees again so that's not too bad it did take three degrees out of the pond so it must have been pretty cold last night so that's not too bad at all we'll have a quick look at the outside temperature as well while we're here crikey we've got 23 24 so we've got 24 degrees there centigrade if you can see it we're up to 24 excellent like i say it's a really beautiful day here today I did actually forget to show you yesterday but I have actually got my sprinkler, my scarecrow back on the pond. You can get them on eBay, they're not very really cheap these days, but they are good. I've had that one I would say six, seven years. Seven years I would say I've had that and it's still going strong. I did buy one of the cheaper 23 pound ones and to be quite honest I wish I'd never seen it. It was a terrible thing. You used to switch it off, walk by it and it would soak you. <laughs> it was a horrible thing I've thrown it in the shed I've used it about twice I've put it in the shed and I've not touched it since and it's been there a couple of years I think but this is spot on absolutely spot on if you look on eBay they call them a uh, pond scarecrow it's called a scarecrow and they do keep cats and uh, frightened herons and things off around the pond I put it on at night and switch it off in the morning the poor old cat if she walks by it does get a bit wet but <laughs> she's, got, she's got used to running by it now but she knows she's all right in the day we don't have it on in the day unless we go out but there's none of that at the minute so uh, she's got used to it hello guys i have been thinking about doing a little bit or having a go at this algae because it is a pain in the butt really although it's not unsightly and uh, causing any real problems in the pond I am getting a lot of it through into the filters so I just might see what sort of effect clover leaf has on it and see if that does knock it back any so I will have a go at it and see what happens there as you can see my pond gets full sun all day I have actually got the brolly up at the moment for the fish to give them a bit of shade down the deeper end but uh, it is becoming a bit of a problem so I'm going to see if the clover leaf will knock it off so I will give it a dose of that but what I have been asked is now I've done all this work on my filled house and everything would I explain how my pipe work runs now and where it goes so what I'll do is endeavour just to give you guys a bit of an update on how the pipe work is run to the filled house and through the filters. Well, as you all know, down there I run from a bottom drain that uh, comes under the path to this manhole here. Then it goes under the lawn, across here and up to the actual sieve filter, the pre-filter and from there that's where my pump is actually I've got the pond pump in the bottom there it's uh, Vario DM 10,000 to 20,000 variable pump that comes out the side there comes up through this box through a non-return valve so I, can't, so I don't get any backflow should the pump switch off through a non-return valve and into the filled house so from there in the actual filled house itself if we go round into the filled house I've taken the tops off so you can have a look in here the pipe work from that sieve filter we've just been looking at I'm sorry, we've got stuff all over the place here at the moment, which is a bit of a pain because I've been doing so much work. But it comes in here, that's the inflow, across here, 
Oh, I've split it into two there, so I've taken it two ways. This one goes straight round to the RDF, and this one coming up here goes through the Evo 30. Now that UV light I used to use until I fitted one in my RDF. Now chances are I will be doing away with that and taking that out. I'm just giving it uh, this season, give it a run without it and see how the one in the RDF does work and how well it works. But if it's successful, because the one in the RDF is a 40 watt, I shall take this one out. Which means I can then bring the pipe work straight up and into the two pipes that go around the RDF and do away with all this section here. So it will shorten the pipe work basically and take a little bit of head pressure off the actual pump. But then both pipes, the top and the bottom one, that one and this, come round, round the back of the moving bed. Here's your two pipes. And if we come along here, this is where the two pipes come out. Here and there's one at the back there. They go into the RDF. So the flow into the RDF are in there. This is the dirty side of the chamber. And this is the clean side after it's gone through the drum and been filtered. I have then from there got two outflows. One either side, one this side and one that side. This side goes directly into the moving bed and keeps that running and the other side goes around the back comes out here across here and into the actual Backy River so that's half of it going to the moving bed half of it coming this way it runs through the Backy River out and then back along that pipe under there which you can see and I don't know whether you can see it underneath that one it goes underneath that pipe there and joins the outflow back to the pond the moving bed the flow out is here which goes out if you can see it just see if we can move things about a bit. If you can see it right down there, that goes out, it's three inch, goes out to where it joins the outlet from the river on the outside. And then if we go back outside again and pick it up from the outside. It comes out as three inch pipe in that box down underground goes across under the path and everything and comes up here where it returns to the pond. So that's the full circuit. I have the two pipes on there so it doesn't, uh, I don't like loud splashing water to be honest. A nice trickle is what I'm always looking for. So uh, I've dropped two 90s and a little bit of pipe on there to stop the, the splashing noise. Rushing water isn't really peaceful, I never think. But that's it, that's the full details of my pipe work and how it's all laid out. Now the foam fractionator that I've got in the corner there that I have been working on, it's not connected at all yet. That's uh, this here. It's a total experiment, I'm just having a play with it to be quite honest, to see if I can make anything of it. They are really for salt water, but I'd just like to know if I can do anything. Um, there wasn't a lot of point in connecting it up before now because the water was so cold and there wasn't that much coming up from the pond, the fish weren't feeding and that sort of thing. So uh, there wasn't the, uh, it wouldn't have been a lot of use running it because it wouldn't have had anything to do much. But now the pond temp's warming up. Let's just have a quick look at what we've got. Now the pond temp's warming up. We've got 14 here today. So it's up to 14 degrees. So now that pond temp's coming up. Um, I am gonna, as soon as I get all this other stuff outside done, I am gonna get that connected and give it a run. 
but like I say it's not been worth it because there's been nothing much coming up from the pond but now the temperature's coming up and the fish are feeding it's a different matter so I will have a go at that and see if, we, see if I can do anything with it what I do want guys is to stick some of this pure plus filter gel into my uh, moving bed just to kick start and give the bacteria a hand to get producing give it a good shake make sure you're giving it a good shake before you use this stuff and it's just to help the bacteria in the filters get running get going after the winter period so what I'm going to do is just drop a little bit just in the filter It's a gel, so it's quite thick. Just in and around the filter, and that will slowly dissolve in there. And that's plenty. That'll do us just to get it going, basically after the winter, and uh, make sure everything gets up and running that little bit quicker, so your bacteria can work and get started. Anyway guys, from a gorgeously sunny day here in North Lincolnshire, it's time again. Do take care, stay safe. We don't want any of you catching this virus. Do stay safe. And from me, until the next one, it's do take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and happy ponding.